Mark, aren't we? Is there a mortgage update? That's expected yes, today? interest rates went down 0.25 percent. My okay. rep just texted me. Nice, yeah, so that's good. Yeah, so I mean, what I'm seeing on my on the market on my end is people are out there, it's busy mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know, a lot of buyers, this is a really good opportunity for buyers just because there's a lot more inventory. Um, you know, and uh, there's some good competitive prices and plus things can be negotiable and you don't have to worry about crazy multiple offers uh, mm -hmm. with interest rates coming down, um, us being at the highest point of inventory come, you know, middle of uh, August um, going into September, inventory is going to fall with interest rates going up. That's only going to push more prices going up with limited inventory. So mm -hmm. really good time to do that. Maybe if you have your listings, maybe start planning them middle to end of August coming out. So there's a yeah. little bit less inventory um but yeah no it's a great time out there right now people are definitely thinking about doing things that's good that's good yeah I'm, i guarantee as well as this inventory sits it's going to be a little bit motivation or buying power it's that little bit more buying power that people some people may have needed to get into what they're looking for 100 percent hundred percent. So yeah, other than that, uh, I find that the leads are being active. I mean, uh, I haven't really been calling this week. Got to be honest, uh, just coming mm -hmm. back, just trying to yeah. deal with things I need to deal with. Um, but I am mm -hmm. getting messages back from stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, I can go over the, the calls, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But before I do mm -hmm. any of that, you know, I know that we have like a smaller class, which is awesome. Um, yeah. You know, how are the three agents feeling on here? How are you guys? Are you guys new to Agent Locator? Um, you know, what? Mm -hmm. how are you finding the leads? Are you finding some pain points? Are you having any success? Love to know. You guys can use the chat, the Q&A, raise your hand if you wish it's easier for you to talk. I yeah, don't, don't be scared to come up here. We don't mm -hmm. bite. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any tips on the CRM that you would recommend for everyone? Just, um, you know, that you think that, you know, from any of the newer updates or, you know, anything else that uh, any of these agents can take advantage of? For me? You're yeah. Talking? Um, yeah. Is there any, like, right. little tips? No, it's all good. No, I think... Uh... Well, it's just kind of looking at their system, right? So a lot of people, uh, when they last communicated with staff, we, you know, we do have a new tasking feature that you can now set alerts for. So, um, which is great for, for those who task. Again, we, we encourage filters, not tasks. Um, mm -hmm. But when you do have a task, you don't want to forget about it. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so uh, so that's, a, that's a great one. But I think, you know, in essence, it's just really kind of following up with people um, and it's you know, and, and it really comes down to how you've been utilizing the system in the first place, right? So if we were, haven't been doing anything uh, with our, with you know, as, as much tracking or logging or things like that, it's hard to pull up groups that we may need to, to reach out in different scenarios. Um, but there's nothing really new that's launched in the very near, like, close future that, like, or near, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, um, that, that, that's really kind of going to to help them with their converting other than reminding them to do things, right? And then really yes. kind of that second layer of a follow-up for them if they have set something in the system, yeah. um, which is important. But yeah, it's just really leveraging um, the tools that you have in there. And this is like another example as to why we want to, you know, make sure we're logging our calls in the system. Right? Yeah. Again, we always encar encourage the Twilio, but um you know can't always uh you know sometimes it, we're not always using it but we still have to log everything and it's just the easy to use that the system is logging it for us so even with uh, interest rates dropping or something like that this is a great opportunity to reach out to your database you know do you have any questions for me or does this you know um sometimes you might know that you have people that are putting on hold because of interest rates right did you mark them as such in the system so that you can easily find those people when situations like this happen Right. Yes, exactly. And um, yeah, exactly, Olivia, mm -hmm. just making sure you're adding val value. But, you know, I'd love to know um, how are people's calls um, going right now? 
Um, do you guys find that a lot of people are answering the calls? Do you feel like there are a lot more responses? Because if I'm getting feedback from, you know, leads coming in, I'm sure most other people are as well, too. And I think mm -hmm. it really just comes down to the mindset. Like when you think about calling your leads, what what are you thinking? Are you thinking that you don't want to do it? Are you thinking deals could just magically pop up? You know, like, what are you guys thinking? Mm -hmm. Because remember, guys, like I can come on here and talk, but I want you guys to engage as well. All right, Shane. Mm -hmm. You allow you to talk here. Morning, guys. How are you? Good. Living the dream. All right, good, good. Uh, just uh, I'm new to agent locator. Uh, my brokerage have just signed up. Um, I've had five leads probably in the last two weeks, and and four out of the five have already unsubscribed. And I haven't had any luck reaching them on the phone. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, once you first start, like, I mean, the leads are just coming in, right? So um, unfortunately, it just looks like that batch of leads weren't the greatest. Um, but I would just, you know, keep going on. Um, what I would do is once someone comes in, I would probably more so reach out to them within, you know, a 24-hour, 48-hour period. Just because when everyone signs up, right, like, when someone's looking at homes, you know, if you don't mind me asking Shane, what, what area do you do out of? I'm in Kitchener, Waterloo. Perfect. So it's like, if I'm looking at homes in Kitchener and Waterloo, I'm looking at yours because maybe something, you know, piqued my interest. And then I'm also looking at probably like a bunch of other people's websites. So when a lot of leads now, a lot of consumers understand that if they're putting their number in, you know, they're probably going to get called and followed up on and stuff like that. So what I usually like to do is I usually like to wait at least 24, 40 hours to do a call. Obviously, if someone's hot to trot, then you get on to them sooner, right? But I feel like that's the best angle. And depending on your scripts and how it works, um, you should be able to get a lot of great feedback. Okay. The um, other thing I noticed too, I just did a test on my own phone. When I call from my, uh, I think it's Twillow, Trillo account. Twillow number. It actually yeah. comes up on the call display as likely spam. Yeah, for sure. Mine does the same thing as well too. Uh, but there's nothing, I don't, unless you can call Twilio and see, but like, they're kind of like, um, internet numbers, right? So yeah. you, know, you can contact support. There is a link that you guys can use that it goes to like the, it's cause there's so many VoIP numbers out there now that this is happening to almost anyone that's using an online number. Um, you can, there's a link that you can go and you register that number as being like a safe number. So you get, it gets marked as safe. Um, so you kind of, it's like you fill out this little form kind of indicating your use of the phone. You're like, I'm in real, like, I, this is my database. I'm a real person. I call people using this number. It's connected to my, like a client database system. It's a number I've purchased online. Um, so you kind of give a case use and they, they should mark it as, uh, it should help market safe. So it's not marked as spam. It could have been that before you even bought that number, it was used somewhere else. Right, um, right. That it got marked as spam because of whatever, right? So not necessarily your case use on on using it. It's perhaps how it was used a couple of years back by by somebody, yes. right? So you're not having any, like I just got this number, bought it on Twilio, right? I, That's you know, cool. I'm using it to call people. I'm a person. There's no robot. There's no whatever, right? And so um, yeah, you just kind of give a case use. I know mine, everyone does it. And, and, you know, I think, and I don't know, even know if it's our phones that do it or if it's um, the provider that does it on our phones, right? Because every now and then, like, I've gotten text messages from a number. It's like, this is uh, like, whatever it says to me is like, do you want to report this as spam or move to spam, right? It gives me the option. And I was like, okay. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, there is. If you reach out to support, I believe they'll be able to provide you with a link that you can then put your number in and fill out that form. I believe they have that. Yeah, yeah there's there's some uh, stuff like that. But, you know, I also wouldn't get so caught up on those kind of things, because truthfully, like someone's going to answer, they're going to answer. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't I wouldn't really get super caught up on stuff like that. Um, yeah, sure. Try to make it better for sure. But like, you know those calls are not going to be the reason why you don't get the house, right? Like, or, or get mm. the lead. 
um, you know, if, if a, a spam number comes in, you know, usually what I like to do is I like to do my initial calls through the, you know, the Twilio number. And then if I'm not getting any luck on them, then I try through my direct number. So yeah, that's that something, you know, I would, I would recommend. Um, but yeah, like just to help you a little bit further, you know, when someone does come in, um, essentially my, my script is super simple. Um, it basically just goes, you know, Hey Shane, hope you're doing well. Um, you know, I just want to reach out to you just to thank you so much for coming onto our website. I'm already real estate doc, uh, .ca. Um, you know, my goal is just to make sure you have a great user experience. I just want to let you know, right off the bat, this is not a sales call by any means. I totally understand that you're just in the information stage and just kind of browsing to see what's out there. And you have, you know, may, you may not have any desire to do anything right now, which is totally cool. But my goal is to set you up on homes that you do want to see and make your list, uh, you know, make your search a lot more easier and efficient. Um, so I see that you're looking at homes, you know, in, in Bowmanville, uh, two bedrooms, two bathrooms. Is that you know, something that you're looking for? Would you consider other areas? You know, are you, would you look at another type of product? Are you only looking at detached? Would you consider others? Would you consider other areas that there was better value, you know, and go on like that, right? You pitch things like that, people will listen. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, you know, I've done so yeah. many transactions through agent locator and agent locator is a great way especially as a newer or a vet or an experienced agent to build in your database because mm -hmm. you know if your spheres of influence you know referrals and stuff like that those are great but sometimes it's super hard to quantify you know and and do multiple deals right like you don't know if tomorrow you're gonna or this month you're gonna do five deals or even one you know what i mean because it's hard to quantify and people refer you when they refer you you can always work with your spheres of influence but unless you're a celeb you know there's only a so so many people you can talk to and build relationships with already right so um i built my business through online leads happy I did that because they're also one of the hardest leads to do. So it just makes sure that, you know, when you're talking to strangers, everything has to be on point because you're earning and building trust with them. So if you are reliable and you pitch things correctly and, you know, you're not so salesy, people don't want sales. Like, you know, they want someone that is more of a relationship. Um, so I would just be focusing on relationship and coming from customer service. It's just like, Picture this. It's just like when you walk into a store, how would you like to be handled? Everyone is different for sure. But usually when someone comes into the store, you know, obviously greet them, whatever. But most people know what they want now, especially with the internet, especially with, you know, all the tools that we have now. People are, consumers are already educated a little bit when they're coming into the store, aka, you know, looking at homes. The other thing is people don't just randomly look at homes, right? Like, you know, sometimes they do if they see a listing on their street or if they see, you know, they're trying to help a family member and, and uh, you know, give their listing a little bit more exposure. There's not like generally people are not just looking just to look right. So if they're looking, that means that they're somewhere in in that field. Um, this does take three to 18 months. I find with these leads, some are sooner, which is great. Some are longer, which is fine. But generally three to 18 months is usually the timeline that you take. Um, from my experience, it's more about customer service and making sure that they're engaged and that they're heard and you're sending things um, that they're looking for. I find that the hardest part about this is once you have abundance of leads is staying on top while you're busy calling. I mean, while you're busy doing deals, you know, appointments and building the business. So I would, what I usually tell people for budget, especially when you're first starting, do a high budget. So you get leads in more faster. And then in two, three months, bring down the budget because then you're probably a little bit more overwhelmed um and uh you have leads right um so that's what i would recommend and then really in the beginning what we're finding well for anyone as our lead lists are low we're, we're focusing on what we're receiving right so um if we if we only have like let's say 20 leads in our system we we really tend to focus on what we don't have about that lead, right? We don't have their email address. We don't have their phone number. I can't do this or I can't do that, right? Rather than um, leveraging what we do have, right? So, and, and being okay that, oh, this one didn't want to give me their email or the proper email address. Or this one didn't want to give me their proper phone number. We've become a little bit more okay with that process and understanding of it. Um, I would 100%, again, keep trying to call those, those leads 100%. 
Um, and the consistency in many cases is what ultimately gets a lot of these people to answer, right? So um, even if that number is marked as, you know, possible SAM, if they keep seeing the same number pop up over and over and over and over and over again, uh, they start to, like, you know, they, they, they're more likely to answer the call just to see who it is that's trying to get in touch with them. Um, whereas if we called, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, every period, like periodically, uh, the consistency isn't there. So all they see is a number that looks like spam or telling them it's possible spam without actually yes. recognizing the phone number. Yes. Um, but also too, like, I feel like as long as your scripts are on point, people are going to forget mm -hmm. about that. Oops, yeah. Sorry. When you're talking to them. Yeah. And it's just being diligent with what you're doing and then your scripts and it kind of like where uh, going back to what Olivia said is, you know, adding more value to each of those calls. Right. Um, and, and she's finding that she's having better interaction with those leads. So That's it's really kind of bringing something to the table on these calls, not just calling to see where they're at in the process. And then, you know, kind of being a little, I guess, colder, stale -ish with, with the call, right? It's being more personable and, and relatable and educated in the process and making them feel comfortable speaking to you on the phone. Yeah, exactly. And I would love to know what is value? Like, what are you guys thinking is value when someone comes in? Let's say if I'm, I came in as a lead, I'm looking, you know, in, in GTA as a whole, mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking, let's say, you know, a, an investment property. So like what, what at that point are you looking to add value or what questions that you may ask um, in order to do that? Because, um, you know, really that's, that's kind of, you know, one of the leads that does come in because there are people that are sitting on some good equity and they may want to um, do an investment property. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you guys look for or how would you bring value to someone like that? If someone wants to come up here, totally cool. Mm -hmm. Everyone's scared. <laughs> what are even some ideas of things? It doesn't have to be like all of it. What are, what are some things that you can you can do? Um, so, so I'll go and, sold, and sold I'll stats, you right? You can send them yeah. sold stats. Yeah. Um, you can sell them, you can send them rentals, like, you know, what the rental stats are as well. So for that area, um, like the sold stats, the same idea where we're watching the turnover in that area um, and how the homes are appreciating um, over time. Um, but if their intentions perhaps are as an investment and renting it out, what can they yield in a bait? If it's, let's say it's a, it's a two suite house that they're buying an upstairs and a downstairs, you know, what are those typically renting for in that area? So giving them that information um, or even having that knowledge already in your market so that it can quickly kind of come out without you having to get back to them on a lot of it, kind of giving them a, a roundabout or a rounded kind of figure on all that information. Yeah. Exactly. I think also too is, is asking what's important to you as an investor. Do you want cash mm -hmm. flow or do you want equity? Obviously mm -hmm. every investor wants both, but what's important to you? Do you want a single, single family or would you want a multiplex mm -hmm. or would you want a condo? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's more so of just asking these questions just to kind of see what is happening and, um, and, and just kind of asking and detailing them because everyone has different needs. And I feel like, where a lot of sales agents fail is because they're not asking questions and they assume, right? They assume like I went to a showing the other day and I thought I didn't really love the house and I was going to say something, but just before I did, they're like, I love this house. I'm like, okay, I love it too. Right? So you, you really don't know. And whatever your perspective is, doesn't really matter. We're here to tailor the search for that individual who's coming in here. Um, and the more likely that they've been heard and building a really good relationship by, you know, having chat back and forth or whatever, that is what's going to make a difference. But I feel like if if everyone here is really not mm -hmm. doing a lot of transactions, this is your time to talk to someone who is. And mm -hmm. I know I'm just kind of sitting here being quiet, um, you know, but Actually, I think even ask questions for different scenarios. And it doesn't uh, have to be related to this. Um, and like, Nick, if if like some of these people are getting started and like some of these people are experienced, some of these people are new. 
Um, if you were brand new into real estate, where would you start? Like, where would you start with your business and how would you kind of get things rolling and, and what would you be doing to get things rolling? Because so kind of consider that these people are brand new. They're not necessarily going to be ecstatic to speak or have the experience. So what would you, if you were brand new, if you could recommend something to you or brand new sellers or less, let's if you're to start real estate all over again as a brand new agent, how would, what would you do differently uh, to kind of get to where you're at now? Yeah. I personally think I would just do what I did all over again. Um, You know, what I did was, you know, pick a lead gen, which is, you know, agent locator, right? Pick a lead gen mm -hmm. and, and really facilitate that lead gen. A lot of people right now, especially at the beginning, you know, you're trying to find deals, you're trying to make money. So the thing is, is, you know, in that field, you need to make sure that you're talking to people. So if you don't have a big sphere or anything like that, it's really important to talk to people who are actively looking at homes right now. That's the best method of doing it. Um, mm -hmm. So I would educate myself by going on Treb, uh, which is, you know, MLS, and I would go and start looking at my marketplace and what is selling and what is not. Before mm -hmm. you start talking to anyone, you need to know what products are out there and what things are, are and what, what homes are selling and what types of homes are selling really well. Because mm -hmm. if you're just going to pick up the phone and call, you're not going to understand the products that they're talking about. And if you can't relate or you can't have that conversation and connect with them, you're, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money. So to restart, I would spend some time on MLS, like maybe 30 mm -hmm. minutes a day. Right. When you first start, maybe a little bit more, get used to like what areas, get used to the communities, get used to the stats, because if you are able to throw out reasons and stats on why that works or that area is better or whatever, and you can say numbers right off the top of your head, how much trust and how much confidence does that lead now have instilled with you um, rather than not knowing what it is? I mean, we've mm -hmm. all shopped around on something. We've all had good doctors or good mechanics or good mm -hmm. whatever and bad ones. And you can see the difference, right? So mm -hmm. I always put myself in that mindset of like, okay, what would a good person that is, you know, good in this field do differently? Um, yeah. And how would that experience be? Um, I feel that we forget that real estate is all about experiences, client experiences, yeah. phone exp mm -hmm. experiences, showing experiences. It's all about presentation. So if you're not a strong presenter, the only way to get better is to educate yourself and then make the calls, make the calls, fuck up, mm -hmm. do all these things. Cause you're not going to learn until you do those things. There were so many times when mm -hmm. I first called. Yeah, I was scared. Yeah, I was nervous. Yeah, I, I didn't really like some calls. I felt like I didn't really speak English because I was, you know, <laughs> kind of, you know, going yeah. over the words, but it all helps because when you hang up on the call, you just start thinking with your brain, oh, I could have brought that up. Oh, you know what? Next time I'll say this script, but I'll bring this up if someone has that objection. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's learning. It's like playing a video game or it's like, you know, picking up a hobby. You start small and mm -hmm. you start scaling. Right. But I think what I would do differently is I would spend a lot more of my budget right away because the more people that you can talk to, the more experience that you can get by those conversations and it gains and it helps you with your growth. So yeah. I really would just do everything I just did all over again. I feel like I did it right. Okay. Now, honest. what if someone doesn't have the means to be spending all that money? Uh, so if they had no, you know, very little marketing funds. Uh, maybe they had a website, they could do that, but they don't have, you know, free to yeah. 300 so, plus but, dollars a month extra to be doing that. Yeah. So what, you know, what are, what are some recommendations of things that they could be doing um, or, you know, that you found that you've maybe even done in the past um, with respect to, you know, getting your, your first business um, to happen really. Yeah. So basically, um, so basically uh, what I would do is this. Remember, number one, real estate is a pay to play sport. So if you come into this business thinking that you, you know, I understand budgets are tight. Trust me, totally understand that. But when you open a business, you have to be funded in some sort of way, right? Um, so I would get a line of credit. That's what I did. I mean, when I, I was working part time and uh, I jumped full time, I saved up a little bit of money and I said, YOLO. Right. And I think it comes down to the mindset. It comes down to the mindset of like, okay, yeah, I can fail. But my mindset was like, if I'm working 40, 50 hours and truly working 40 to 50 hours a week, yeah, why would I get, why wouldn't I make things happen? Right. So I'm in other words, 
It's right? like that, a full-time job and you can't, exactly. you can't really, if you're always working, you're putting the hours and the effort in, uh, regardless, you should be able to walk away with something. Right? Yes. So if you spend eight hours door knocking, guarantee you're going to have a list of phone numbers and addresses and, and, and potential you know, sellers it, if you were to do that every single day. Yes. Right. right. I think too, if, if you're super tight and you have no more funds, the things that you should be doing is connecting with the people that you know. And that could just be talking about what's happening. Like, for example, today's the rate cut. I would call people in your database or buyers or sellers that you know that are thinking of making a decision and giving them an update because that is something mm -hmm. of value. Um, I would yeah. also do bank days. I would also do uh, door knocking. I would also do um, social media. Like, I mean, social mm -hmm. media is for you guys. <laughs> right so i would be talking about it i would be showcasing like local businesses i would be building relationships i'd be talking about what's happening on the market like there's so many things that you can do that you know you don't necessarily need money for but remember like real estate you need to make money and you have to spend money just like any business you have to spend mm -hmm. money in order to get the consumers to coming to you and then with your mm -hmm. team uh, or just your scripting by yourself. Um, that is how you facilitate. And I mean, you know, th there's two ways of doing it, doing it organically, which is going to be a little bit longer and more stressful, but fine. Or mm -hmm. you, you pay money to cut the line, which is agent locator, get some leads going. And now you're talking to people and now you're getting an experience faster mm -hmm. and now you're getting a paycheck faster. Yeah. That's yeah. the hard part. That's the hard part. And of really it's building confidence in it too. So you see, build confidence for one um, and I think Beverly spoke on this one is, is knowing what you can do differently to stand apart from the competition. So once yes. you're firm and believe in that and how that's going to help others, um, your confidence will definitely just like, you know, grow, you yeah. feel a little more comfortable. And then again, that market knowledge and understanding. So again, educating yourself so that that confidence level does kind of go through. So you're not just saying, I'm going to be different because of this. Um, but knowing that, and, and once we have that confidence le level, things do get easier, right? Mm -hmm. so because we just know, we're like, well, I know I'm going to do better than, than Nick because this is why, right? Mm -hmm. So Nick may have all these deals, but I bet you Nick doesn't do this right so right and that can help make you stand apart because once you start to even recognize patterns of your even your competition in the industry you can kind of identify what's going to set you apart from everyone else mm -hmm. and i think like the value proposition is just you being you right like mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be all this crazy stuff it's just your competitive edge mm -hmm. and the way that you think and the way that you get things done um, like right now, like truthfully, like I only need to take people out a couple, like I only need to take maybe one or two offers and my clients are getting it. And the reason why they're mm -hmm. getting it, and I'm not writing five, seven, 10 offers, which I think is ridiculous is because I'm having all the hard questions first. I'm not just saying, yeah, put the offer in and we'll see what happens. I'm like, no, well, here's the comps. This is what it looks like before the comps in this area. This is the sales price here. From my understanding, from understand, from, you know, being a heavy listing agent and doing buys as well is, you know, this is where you can expect. So if you think that your budget is, you know, too pressed on this, then maybe we look at another product. Um, however, if you do like this, then, you know, I think that we should move forward. So I'm basically mm -hmm. just putting things in, in their end. I'm not really saying like, you need to do this. I'm saying, Hey, well, how much do you like the house? Do you really see yourself living here? And if you do, you know, what would you rate this house from one to 10? I'm not the homeowner. If you're giving it a nine or a 10, then it looks like you you found your house and like remember the grass is not greener on the other side so also too in this market people are coming to play so we need to make sure that we're coming in strong with our offer and educating about offers and what's important right mm -hmm. like price is not the only thing important there's four things that go into an offer that's important and that's price conditions deposit and closing dates mm -hmm. So price is a good indicator, but it's not always the best winner. I've actually mm -hmm. accepted one on my listing that was 10, uh, five grand less because it was more of a solid package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. I mean, that's kind of where it is, but Olivia, I'd love for you to come up and I would love to talk to you about, you know, struggling um, with converting leads. Cause I think that'd be easier. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Mm -hmm. If you want to put your hands up or if, um, or if um, the ability to talk. Yeah.
I do also have um, Dragon here she's in the chat or the Q&A um, is struggling with my initial phone call and they told me they're just looking. I struggle what to say in the follow-up calls. So the just looking is a very rounded, full, like, I don't know, sphere of what does just looking mean, right? Because it's, it's a very loosely used term and we all use it all over the place, right? We, we're just looking, we're just browsing. You know, we go into a store, tell them we're just looking and leave with bags of items. So it's not that these people are actually just looking. It's that they're not quite ready to talk to you about it yet or they don't want to because they're, um, anticipating a sales pitch, yes. right? So it's really kind of pulling back the layers and figuring out, all right, so I understand you're just looking, you know, how long have you been looking for? If you were to buy something down the road, what does that look like for you guys? Only looking for this, that, I only want to be sending you properties. And then, you know, kind of how Nick does, I only want to send you value. I don't want to be spamming you with a whole bunch of listings that you would have no interest in ever pursuing down the road. Um, and so once you pull back and let them know that they're just looking is okay, the more willing that they are going to open up to you, right? So, and then when you follow up with them, if you're having a hard time figuring out what to say when you're following up with them, leave a note for yourself. Next time you follow up with them, you know, just check to see how they're doing with da, 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 right? Or, hey, I just wanted to check in. I hope you guys are all doing well. Let me know if you need any adjustments to your search. Right. Or I noticed that you haven't been online in a while, just making sure everything's still good on your end. Right. It doesn't have to be intrusive. It's all customer service. So this also goes down into your notes. Right. So the more detailed your call notes are and the more uh, relaxed and relatable your conversations are, the more information you're going to get about that lead to be able to put into those notes. So you're building a relationship. It could even be like, hey, I was just thinking I feel it's just like driving by the beach and I saw dogs running and I thought about you and what you told me about how your dogs love swimming. I hope everything's going with your search, right? Something just made me think about you, right? So it, it doesn't, and you can, but leave yourself notes. If you're finding yourself every time you're doing, you're not sure what to say to them because they were just looking, um, you know, the more information you can even tell yourself next time you call, next time I follow up, next follow up, say this or talk about this. Right. And then you'll know you, there's no kind of hesitation to do those follow ups because a lot of us will put those in. We're going to follow up with them and then we're kind of eek. I don't exactly. know what to say to these people. So I'm just going to leave it for a while, you know. So, and it can't yeah. be a voicemail. You can tell yeah. them on the voicemail, hey, you don't need to call me back. Just thought of you the other day and, and just want to check in to see how everything's going on your end. You know, give me a call if you need to, but otherwise, I'll check in a little bit later down the road. Yeah. And hey, also, don't be scared to call unsubscribed leads. I do. Hey, yeah. I saw that you unsubscribed, you know, um, just wanted to connect. Is it the reason why you unsubscribed? Is it because you weren't seeing things that you want or did things change or did you purchase? Yeah. Right. They're, they're already unfollowed. So what does it matter? Yeah. So, yep. you know, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I've actually reconnected with other leads that did unfollow because they're like, you know what? I wasn't getting what I wanted. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. This is, you know, um, if they purchase, congratulations. That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Olivia, so what are you feeling that you're struggling with converting leads? Like in what regards do you feel that, you know, you're having good initial conversations and then it's just fizzling out and then they're not really active? Or do you feel like, you know, the conversations that you're having with are, are strong, but then they're not getting to the next level. Hey guys. Hi. Hey. Um, so I would say in regards to like, just struggling with converting them is I will connect with some of the leads and have a, a great like initial conversation and stuff and, um, put in my task to follow up in like a week or two just to make sure they're getting the leads and what they're looking for and stuff. Again, like that customer service, like you were saying. Um, but when I'm trying to reconnect after that, they're kind of MIA. Mm, okay. So I wonder if in the call, like, cause remember, like if we're being customer service, that's fine. But I feel that mm -hmm. where where I get further with my leads is because I'm asking questions about what they're looking for and in turn, giving them timbits that they don't know about. So for example, Hey, you're looking in Oshawa, right? Um, no problem. Hey, would you consider going a little bit more East if you can get better equity and in turn in the future, get more money? 
Would you consider things like that? Oh, no. Or maybe, yeah, what are you thinking? Oh, well, the reason why I, I'm saying that is because, you know, just before COVID, you know, everything would sell closest to the city would sell higher. So, for example, Pickering would sell higher than Ajax. Ajax would sell higher than Whippy and so on and so forth. However, right. after COVID, what has really happened, especially with interest rates going up and kind uh, and staying there, now with buyers spending so much more resources and monthly fees, um, buyers are more so community based now. So they want to if they're going to spend the money and they're going to you know pay their mortgage, they want to be in communities that they want. So now what you'll see is that Clarington actually sells higher than Oshawa and is getting close to Pickering and Ajax. Um Whitby actually sells higher than Pickering and Ajax. So it's not so much being close to the city anymore. It's now buyers being super savvy with what's happening in there um and now investing in communities that they believe that is going to take off even faster. Do you see the difference in just like customer service and now giving my own opinion about what's happening in the marketplace that is people that is what people want people don't want like order takers they want someone just to find them the competitive edge to help to guide find them. them the deal right if you're guiding them yeah, so in that I'm, knowledge yeah sorry go ahead when I'm, not I'm, having those initial... that, yeah, by the way. I'm not saying you're not sorry? doing that i said yeah, I'm not i was just gonna say not. like i'm yeah. trying to use um like ask those questions, but also just use the knowledge of the communities and stuff. Like I grew up in Bowmanville. So yeah. use like that knowledge. I had yeah. someone looking for like a piece of land. I think it was Whippy, Oshawa. And I said they might have a better luck in Clarington. Um, and they actually ended up buying in Clarington, but not with me, but. <laughs> yeah. I know it's just annoying, but hold on one second there. When they're looking at vacant land, right? So mm. what I would do is, Hey, I totally understand, you know, like, I totally understand you're looking for vacant land. Let me ask you something. Are you building it yourself or you're hiring a builder? Or what's mm -hmm. your plan, right? Like, these are questions. So anyways, they'll find, oh, I'm, I'm, you want to build your dream home on there. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, do you have any experience with the municipalities? Do you know what you can build? Do you know how you can build? Do you know how to get your permits? Do you know what you're looking for? No, not really. I'm actually looking for someone to guide me through that. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, you know, I've done a lot of those things in the past. I can definitely tell you your pain parts and stuff like that. But it is a little bit more of a thorough process. And I know that, you know, we've mm -hmm. chatted and I caught you off guard. You know, do you have a moment that we can book or I would love to grab coffee with you to kind of find out what your needs are. And I can tell you where and which municipality would be more, you know, helpful in terms of where you want to build and what you want to build and in turn what that looks like. Um, you know, are you open sometime next week so it's more so of just like you know not just telling them the property it's more so of being like in depth well hey in in uh clarington you know they're they're open to builds which is great but oshawa would have some really good opportunities because oshawa is developing so much more and the city is working with you know builders and you know people who are looking to build houses much more easier and their permit their permit system is much faster you know they're they're willing to get more they're willing to get more density in the market, uh, you know, in the marketplace in Oshawa, which in turn is building the city. So you'll get a lot more faster answers and you'll actually get uh, more of a faster process in Oshawa if you were considering that. So it's more so of just giving experiences about what they're purchasing, essentially. That's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to get at um, because yeah. that goes further. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing uh, in terms of these leads. I'm literally, you know, finding out what their needs are and then giving them timbits about what they should be looking for. Because when you're educating people about something that they don't know and you're giving them good timbits, they're like, wow, this person's really, really good. I want to stick with them. And sometimes they're just like, you know, they're using friends and family. But usually when I'm going deep in those conversations, I am asking, I'm not, I mean, I'm being bold. Like, hey, if you don't mind me asking, are you currently working with another agent? Okay, no problem. Do you have anything signed? Because I don't want to step on toes. Yeah. You know, because when when you know those, that, that's when you know what it is. If there's like, yeah, I have someone in mind. Oh, I totally understand. Now, the person that you have in mind, do they do builds like this? Do they, are they educated in these things? Do you feel like they're confident? Like, you know, and it's not like you're down talking. You're asking questions about your competition and you're trying to find out what that person is feeling about who they're speaking to and maybe if they're saying hey you know what like i like this person however i don't know if they're the best vehicle after talking to you it seems like you have some good timbits that you know no one really brought to my concern so i, I really enjoy that so yeah i would love to grab coffee with you so it's kind of like more so like that like i find like with these leads you have to be kind of 
you know, storytelling and also giving your perspective and giving them, you know, good tidbits and pivot on their, on their stuff. There's so many times where I've had conversations where I honestly didn't even think about that, Nick, I'm glad that you called and now they're hot to trot and now they want to move forward with things. So I find like surface levels are great. Customer service levels are great just to get like them to open up and talk. But when you get that information, it's now up to you on how to bring it and figure out what route they're going to take. Mm -hmm. package, package it correct uh, nicely, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's more so of just making sure that, you know, the lists are super tight of what they're looking for. It's also like, hey, you know what? I'm going to send you a handpicked list of homes that I think is a good fit. Um, and then telling them to review and telling them to see what they think about it. Um, you know, or just saying, hey, this listing just came out. Did you take a look at this listing? It's actually really, really nice. And it matches what you're looking for. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Okay, perfect. Well, do you want to just go take a quick tour of it? Like, hey, no, no stress on my end. I'm not here to tell you to put an offer on it. But I think, you know, now that you have a good budget, or now you have an idea of what you're looking for, I think that it's super important to go see the house because us realtors sometimes like to catfish in the photos. And next thing you know, you go into the house and it's not what, what it envisioned, right? Maybe the staging was really good. Um, and it hit a lot of other things that you didn't see through photos. So I think it's super important to see that. And plus that now it's nice to see a face to name, right? Or put a name to the face. So I literally just talk to people like I'm their besties. Yeah. I'm really good. Yeah. I think my superpower is really making people feel comfortable um, and educated in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And I use my lingo. Like I yeah. say, like, this is pimped out. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Pimped out. It's like, it's super, mo uh, super move and ready. Yeah. I, like nice finishes. Yeah. Right. Because I feel like it's great to be customer service, but then switching to the way that you talk makes it more personable and makes it yeah. more like, okay, we're not just like, this is not just like a transaction. This is more so and like sometimes it, and it's reading who you're talking to as well. Right. You can, you can definitely like, you know, listen and hear, okay, I'm talking to an old lady, you know, pimped out. She might be like a little throwback. I might change how I communicate with her to be more relatable right or if somebody's just driving with you right regardless you know you're using that so it's being able to read the person that you're talking to just by listening to them and how they're engaging and communicating back yeah is there any other like objections you feel that are always coming up that uh, you want maybe another perspective on this goes for anyone you yeah use the chat q a Because like before I started calling, I scripted myself like I scripted really well. Um, and obviously, like there's only a certain point that you can script before you start going onto the phone. Like you don't want to script for two hours and then get in your head saying that you're not good enough to call. Right. So, yeah, you want to script, you want to get your motivation up a little bit more. But um, I'm really good at objections. Like I just know how to piece things together. And remember, there's only so many objections. Everything else becomes the same at that point. Mm hmm. But if there's another perspective you guys want on a certain, you know, objection or or anything, like even yourself, Olivia, um, let me know because I would love to give you a different perspective on it. And again, you guys can write down. So it's almost like, you know, when you're studying for that, uh, that, that essay that you have to read out in front of the class, right? And you're reading it over and over again, or speeches that you had to do. Um, reading it over and over again, um, doing the same kind of concept, but like, let's say you have a scenario and then different responses that you could actually say, depending on what they're saying. So almost like studying uh, different responses. So it's just kind of in the back of your head or record yourself and play it back. So when you're listening to it, because the way we remember things sometimes is a lot different when we're listening to it than it is if we're just reading it, right? So, um, or say it out loud. That way, when you're on those calls, it just kind of triggers in and it's not going to be exactly as you wrote it down, but you're going to remember the main concept of what you wrote down in various scenarios um, or how to direct a call or things that you should be saying um, to, to guide the call. Right. Um, so just practice makes perfect. And that's one way to, that you can do it without actually talking to people, right? It's like you're talking to yourself um, and that goes for your objections as well. So writing down the objection, what are four possible different ways that I could handle this objection, right? And then remembering what those are and where those go from there, depending on, you know, because it could be like that, that branch, you know, when you're writing, you know, you have 
four different responses and each response has four other different ways that it can branch off, right? So kind of branching it all off. Um, and then you'll learn naturally, your, your brain will automatically trigger uh, when you are being responsive that, you know, one of those branches are always going to kick in. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you on that. But um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, just really trying to understand your lead and try to make the process as simple as possible and try to give them the answers mm -hmm. that they want, not mm -hmm. that they want to hear, but the answers that is truly what happening right now. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but that's pretty much it. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, there's no really like magic answer. It's just like connect with people. Mm -hmm. That's right? really all it is. Yep. Build right? a relationship. Everyone is different. And I wouldn't get so stressed about not knowing what, object. like make the call, build a relationship, help them find solutions. And that's it. Yeah. Right. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, I mean, that that's pretty much it. Um, but mm -hmm. remember, like, I can keep saying the same things. I've been what doing these calls for like three years now. Yeah, uh, so. with, uh, wow, Angel now Walker. anyway, yeah, I wow, know, right? Anyway. <laughs> so, so it's just like I can do my like all my calls are all the same. Yeah. Nothing changes, right? It's just yeah. you know, it's just more so being scripted and kind of figuring out exactly how to position people. And I yeah. feel that you know you need to sound confident over the phone, and you need to sound like you have a plan. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, not all the time. Sometimes it's just shooting the shit with the client, right? Like just, oh, hey, like, what are you up to? Living the dream? Oh, that's awesome. What did you do this weekend? Right? Yeah. And then pivoting right away to like, oh, wow, like this person's just talking to me about something, right? So yeah. Um, yeah. it doesn't it, always it, have to be real estate related when we're reaching out to people, yes. whether, you know, the first call, obviously it is, but we're going to kind of steer away or try to be relatable. Yes. Follow-ups doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be real real estate. We're, no. we're just building relationship with these people, right? So we're making them uh, feel comfortable speaking to us. Yeah. So when the time does come, they're, they're more likely to kind of lean our way. Yeah, for sure. And like, really, Olivia, like the thing that I was struggling with when I first started was not asking questions. I was just like telling. But you mm -hmm. got to ask questions because the more you're asking questions and you're, the conversation is going back and forth, that means that they're open, they're trusting you, they're liking you. Mm -hmm. So the, like my superpower is ask questions. If you mm -hmm. notice on all my calls, like it's just like, oh yeah, would you consider this? You know, how would you feel about that? Do mm -hmm. you feel like this is the right fit? Yeah. No, what are you thinking? What what would be the right mm -hmm. fit? Can you give me mm -hmm. a little bit more information? And then now you're finding information about a puzzle and now you're putting the puzzle together. So mm -hmm. it's just super important that you need to ask questions. If you're not asking questions, that's mm -hmm. where that's where half the battle is going to be. Yeah. Right. And it's using your, you know, hey, I noticed that you weren't, uh, and you can use the system tools, right? Like if you knew that someone is just looking, they're down the ways, down the way, or certain things have to happen. Sometimes it's just because life isn't ready for them to make a move yet, right? Um, or different factors have to be met in order for it to even be possible for them to make a move, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, even like touching up and using system tools, like they looked at, you know, maybe you knew somebody that was just looking, um, or they have, for whatever reason, they're not moving right now, but you notice that they favorited a listing or that maybe they looked at it multiple times indicating, well, they, they're obviously interested in this one. Um, uh, that's a great reason to follow up with them. Cause you can send that listing back and say, Hey, Krista, I was just thinking about you the other day. Um, I saw this property that, you know, and I know that you're not moving or, you know, there's a lot of factors before you can make a move, but I saw this listing the other day and I thought of you. Right. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on it? You already know that they looked at it five times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it's just another way to engage with them to show that you're actively paying attention as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting here waiting for you to do all the work. Uh, find that the more I'm myself. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like just speaking your lingo, like yeah. honestly. Scripted, um, scripted just means no, you know what to say, not like you're reading an exact script because then you just sound like a robot, right? Exactly. So it's it's being just knowing what to say and and, and I, or what information gonna, you're trying to grab. Yeah, right? and I was just gonna say too, like you want them to say honestly, it feels so nice to have someone that doesn't sound scripted. Mm -hmm. You know, when someone says that, it's like okay, perfect, you've mastered your scripts because yeah. it's like. No, I'm, I'm scripted. I'm just like, you know, covering it up. Right. Because yeah. it's, the it's only way that you're going to get good at these is just, just like anything, you got to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Once you keep mm -hmm. doing it, you find out where pain parts are. You find out where flaws are in the system and then you recreate it and you make them better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's pretty much it. I feel like the hardest thing is once you have an abundance of leads is connecting with everyone. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest part. But at the beginning, like you should be, you know, relentless on, you know, following up, um, obviously not too much, but like building relationships and just like finding them the best deals. Like, honestly, a lot of people do not follow up. So if you can talk to that lead for four or five times, like that's where it's at. And I'll give you an example. One of my lead, one of my agent locator leads that I spoke to last year um had a great conversation didn't get me into the house at that time um one second um didn't didn't you know didn't go at that time he was talking to a bunch of agents whatever whatever and then um followed up you know when he told me that I should be which was like six months from then or a year started following up did all that kind of stuff um, and then next thing you know, when I followed up, you know, throughout a couple times, you know, he goes, Nick, you know what? I'm ready to sell my house. No one else has been calling me. So, you know, I'd love for you to have the listing. <laughs> okay. Like all I did was call. All I did yeah. was just call. And you know what? I'll show you the listing right now. Sometimes you get those. You're just calling, checking in, see how they're doing. Um, could be the initial call even, but no one's yeah. calling, right? Or it's a, you'll be amazed at that. You know, sign up on a bunch of websites. See, you'd be amazed at how many people don't actually call you back. Mm -hmm. This is the listing. It's a $2 million listing. All just from calling. Because your competition is not calling and not following up. And what's cool about this is now I'm getting some really good sign calls. So I'm getting more multi-level, you know, multi-million dollar deals. And mm -hmm. also on top of that is I just got a call from a TV show that wants to feature this. Yeah. Find my country home. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a featureable home. It's very neat. Right? But like I this, know, is, this is what agent locator can do for you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm not calling as much as I used to right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, and that's on me, right? But um, I'm just redeveloping a few things on my end to get to that. But you know, that's that's the thing. Like these leads, your life can change so much in one year if you just put your head down and just really try to find a way. And you realize like, it's like one, one call can lead to two to three transactions, just like yeah. that, yeah. just like that. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's not necessarily just the person that you're calling, right? Well, you're calling them, they have a house to sell. Maybe they want to buy, you know, two houses. <laughs> Maybe they want to buy a, two condos, one to live in, one to invest in. Right. So it's, we never know who's on the other end when we are making those calls and what their situations are, but often, yes. Um, a lot of the buyers in your system are sellers as well. They have something to sell, right? Yes. Hey, Martha, sorry, but... sorry, just put yourself on mute, Shane. No. Yeah, just one sec. Here, here we go. Got him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's fine. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. But that's so... pretty much it, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. It's just like, if you get anything from this, just keep calling people. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. It's just keep calling, keep calling. And you'll know, like as I said, you never know what year is going to be on the other end of that call. But the more we do it, the more comfortable we're getting um, on those calls. Uh, and if we don't have enough people to call, go find the people to call. Yeah. Put yourself out there. 10 yeah. hellos. Talk to 10 people today about real estate. How are you going to do that? You're either going to talk to them on the phone. You're going to go meet them in person. Yeah. Or social media. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, you know, there's a lot of new listings in our area right now. If you're looking just browsing right now to see what's out mm -hmm. there, send me a DM. Mm -hmm. Love to send you, you know, everything that's in this market. No, no soliciting, yeah. just, you know, just trying to help you. Or, hey, you know, if you're a home seller in this, if you're a home seller, then chances are whenever a listing comes up or just sells, you're probably curious to know what it's, you know, what, what it's sold for. So let me help you find that information. Not here to harass you, but I want to give that out because just like myself as a homeowner, my goal is to make sure that I'm always educating and, and keeping you updated on the street. Because if there was a big sale that happened on your house, like, you know, a home sold super crazy over asking, mm -hmm. wouldn't you want to know? Maybe wouldn't you want to take advantage of it? So mm -hmm. and that yeah. way you can start building your nosy neighbor uh, database and just all this stuff. Like there's so much you can do, not just by spending ads, but just mm -hmm. by talking about it. And 
putting yourself out there. Yeah. Putting yourself out there. Putting yourself in those comfortable, uncomfortable situations that we're not all confident in doing, but it's those situations that are going to get us better at what we're doing. 100%. 100%. But that's pretty much it. So okay. if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them now before mm -hmm. you know we get out for the day and getting you guys to call. But yeah. um, that's what I'm here for. So if you guys have any questions, just please let me know. A couple of minutes left. No, we're either chatting a lot or we're not chatting at all. Right. <laughs> the hit or miss. The hit or miss right? always. Always it is. Looks like people are getting out here now. So, okay. Well, yeah. if you guys have any questions, okay. follow me up on uh, Marie Real Estate and uh, always happy to help. But Crystal, awesome. always a pleasure. Yeah. And can't wait we'll to see you next see time. see you next month. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.